With the conclusion of the Klingon Civil War, the Kizuma Alliance has been aiding in rebuilding the First City and working out how it fits alongside the government. In the meantime, Admiral Hale's responsibilities to that endeavour have been put on hold as we step back from Alliance duties and face an intense debrief at Earth space dock. After all, such a heavy Starfleet presence in the installation of the new Chancellor, the realm of the Klingon Empire, could raise questions, so understandably there is a need to at least handle things carefully, as justified as my presence may be. But no sooner had our week stay at ESD come to a close than Admiral Joral Quinn, the CNC of Starfleet, calls us to his office with a new mission. Standing by his desk, silent for now, is a face we have heard about but not seen until now. Vice Admiral Catherine Janeway. In STO, alongside her other duties, she's been heading up multiple investigations into things like Species 8472 prior to the Iconian War. It seems wherever the Vice Admiral is sent, it's to investigate trouble. Her presence here is not a good sign. One of our classified research facilities has taken a high-profile person of interest into custody. Starfleet Intelligence sent agents to investigate, but the prisoner refuses to speak with them on the matter. Here's where it gets interesting. The prisoner says they will only speak to you about this. Naturally, Starfleet Intelligence wants to get to the bottom of things, and so they've requested your assistance. You've been granted clearance to enter the facility and meet with the prisoner. Get out there and see what's going on. A high-profile person of interest. No further details are forthcoming, which is all very clandestine. The fact that they only want to talk to me is suggestive that we may have met, but I guess I'll find out for sure when I get there. We return to the USS Armager and prepare to depart within the hour. It's a shame I didn't get any shore leave. The system we're travelling to is the Izar system of the star Epsilon Bootis, which is a human colony founded in 2183 and admitted to the UFP that same year. A subtle reminder that not every human world has to be a Federation one. The capital city is New Seattle and its inhabitants of 185 million people. Unfortunately, it is mostly known as the birthplace of former Starfleet Captain Garth, who adopted the locale as part of his name. This officer was highly decorated during the Klingon War and the Battle of Axanar in particular, but ultimately this ended in tragedy. He suffered an intense injury over Ansos IV, and its native inhabitants nursed him back to health by granting him cellular metamorphosis. It's not clear if this did something to his mind or he was already on a mental decline, but he descended into madness and ordered his crew to genocide Antos IV. His crew rightfully refused the order, and he was relieved of command and eventually sent for rehabilitation on Elba II. In a ray of hope, it seems that he eventually responded well to treatment, but his legacy was muddied by this incident. Eventually he found a place as the Federation ambassador to Antos IV, in repayment and perhaps some form of penance. We have to make a course adjustment at one point as we approach the border of the First Federation space and find one of their glowing buoys marking their borders, so we oblige and skirt their territory. The First Federation has maintained its peaceful cultural exchange program with the Federation since its first contact with Captain James Kirk, and I'm not about to upset that all for the sake of a shortcut. We also pass close to Lucari space, the home of Captain Kumaki, who stands among her people's first explorers and a pioneer of their cooperation with the Federation. Eventually, we arrive at Izar. Unfortunately, we hit our first snag with this mission. The system's under attack. Commander Kyle DeSoto, aboard the Izar research station. We are under heavy attack and requiring me... Commander DeSoto, this is the Armager. We are in system. Please respond if you can hear me. This is Captain Ofu, USS Kanchu. We could use your help dealing with this Terran Empire fleet. There's something they want on that station, and they're not taking no for an answer. Terrans? Okay, Captain. Questions later. I'm moving to engage. We were expecting you. The Terrans? Not so much. Not sure how they found a station with a classified location, but here we are. Commander Kyle DeSoto is the son of Captain DeSoto, as seen in The Next Generation, and he's been an intelligence officer for most of his career. 
His last assignment saw him posted to Admiral Tanay's Starbase 39 along the Romulan neutral zone to counter Tal Shiar operations, but I guess he got reassigned. While the USS Konshu NCC H2990 is a Kalin class intelligence vessel, a stealth and research ship of the 25th century, and it's accompanied by a small wing of other SFI ships. We focus our firepower on one of the Terran ships and we must get something vital because. Nice shot. Keep it up. Captain Othu says he was not expecting this attack, yet we seem to be handling it rather well so far. But the Terran's goal remains unknown, so we can't say for certain. Glad you turned up. Things were going sideways fast. The Terrans really did a number on the station. Our scans show they're running on emergency power and batteries. Most of their critical systems are down, including comms. Yes, we saw. The fact that they crippled the station without destroying it is uh, signs of a coordinated attack. It seems they knew just how to strike. An inside job might be possible, but we have to take into account we are dealing with the mirror universe here. Unfortunately, they share a lot of our stuff. Yes, we noticed that as well. They made surgical strikes on a number of key targets, but didn't do enough damage to destroy the station. Like I said earlier, there's something in there they want. Guess they figured they needed to soften the station up first. Can you beam an away team over? We'll keep an eye on things out here. Good idea. I'll put together a team to secure the station. Excellent. I'd go in weapons hot if I were you. The Terrans sent boarding parties over once the station lost its shields. I doubt they'll be happy to see your team when they arrive. Are you ready to beam over now? We close into the station and assemble a team. The Mirror Universe lives up to the moniker for the strange effect between our two realities. It seems that even when our universes drift apart in terms of differences, they're pulled back together. So individuals, tech, locations still occur. The same people are still born, the same designs are created, it's uncanny. Undoubtedly this has been, you know, helped along by the numerous contaminations that have occurred between the Terrans and us, usually from the Terran side, when they've routinely stolen our development data for their own gain, like the Defiant from the 24th century, and more recently and concerningly, a captured Odyssey class. We actually owe the Tholians for uncovering the Mirror Universe Odyssey as they managed to capture one on Nukara and had it held for research purposes of their own. Things like this have kept the Mirror Universe close to ours, when rightfully it should have spiralled into a completely different and unrecognisable universe by now. Just look how drastically different the Kelvin timeline is from such a small change, for example. So it's conceivable that their intimate knowledge of our station here is probably down to the fact that they have ones just like it. We beam over to find the deck plunged into darkness, with even the emergency lighting offline. Lieutenant Commander De Soto is already here, attempting to treat dying Starfleet officers. Commander Kyle De Soto, Starfleet Intelligence. Thanks for coming. We can really use your help here. If we can get to engineering, we can get main power up and running. Once we have that handled, we can start restoring critical systems. Understood, but we're here for a prisoner, Commander. Can you give me a status update on them too? They're fine. The brig's security systems are still online, and life support is functional on that deck. To be honest, they're probably in the safest spot on the station. The rest of the place is running on emergency power and crawling with Terran boarding parties. Alright then. Take us to engineering. This way! We're lucky you made it out here. Things were looking pretty grim. Hey, this way. Hard to say what the Terrans are after. Could be a number of things. They could be after any one of the classified projects, or all of them. Starfleet and Terran soldiers littered the darkened halls. Terrans tend not to use weapons set to stun unless they want captives. Clearly, whatever information they're here to collect, they don't think they seem to need the crew for it. Afraid the turbo lift's offline. We'll need to use the Jeffries tube to get down there. Oh, of course it is. Okay, 
crawling through ducts it is then. I mean, that is why they're here, I guess. Watch out! There's still some hostiles here! Ah, it also appears my torch has stopped working. After a brief exchange of fire, the commander notes that someone is still alive. That officer's still alive. Check on that plasma leak while I help him out. Round the corner, a corridor has taken damage, and the plasma conduit is leaking into the hall. We can re divert the flow, but we need to know where the valve is. We need to get through here. See the lower panel in the wall? Open it to access the EPS valves. You can adjust them to redirect the plasma flow and clear us a path. On it. One of your patient. He's stable. Once we get comms back up, I'll call for a medical team. Engineering's over here. Over here. Damn! They're still here too! Take them down! The battles in the dark are illuminated only by the strobing of our weapons fire and explosions. There are more in the back. We have to stop whatever they're doing. The engineering room, or reactor control is more accurate, houses several more Terran forces, so we have to root them out. Take them down! Open fire! With that accomplished, we return to the main console to find DeSoto waiting for us. Now, let's see about restoring power, shall we? I'm rather tired of stumbling around in the dark. Looks clear. Let's get to work. I need you to open that lower access panel and reconfigure the isolinear chips inside it. Once you do that, we should be able to get the reactor back online. Ah, yes. Tinkering with isolinear chips, I know how to do that. <clears throat> Tanette, can you give me a hand? I mean, that looks almost right. Damn! A couple of EPS conduits were fried! We need to lock down those power spikes. I'll do what I can down here to keep things from melting down. Gonna need you to get upstairs and deal with those power spikes, though. Okay, out of six cores, number three is malfunctioning. That is one deck above us. So, first things first, we need to scale the nearby ladder. Okay, there are two consoles you can use to regulate the power spikes. The consoles are on either side of the reactor. Good luck. Either side of the reactor. So I have to go there through what can only be described as something Tesla on crack would have dreamed up. Great. This is the downside to Admiral Quinn's reforms to the wartime Admiralty chain. Fewer desk jobs. Ah, who am I kidding? I wouldn't have accepted promotion if they took away my ship. Work smart, but work fast. We need to get this under control. We tinker with one of the consoles and re-engage its systems. This is definitely going in my report, and I'm going to be recommending that creating backup power regulator consoles should be further away from the reactor in future, in the event that an EPS fault leads to this sort of situation. We make it unscathed to the second regulator and set about restoring the reactor. Huh. Lights are back on. That seems to have done it. How's that for reaction content? Am I popular now, Mr. YouTube? Nice work. Power's back and the EPS is locked down and in the green. All right, there's a console near your position. Use it to bring internal sensors back online. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Right, oh, where is... oh, wait. Yeah, I see it. Station reactors tend to differ from warp cores substantially. Although they may still be antimatter-based, many are still fusion, and they're not designed to generate warp bubbles. But, now we have power restored, at least we can access the internal sensors and get a read on the situation. Ops to all hands, we're detecting hostiles at the brig. I repeat, hostiles at the brig. That's not good. They must be going for the prisoner. Get to the brig ASAP and deal with the situation. I need to keep working here to restore critical systems while there's still time. All right, do what you can. Don't forget to keep them locked out though, and keep an eye out for more patrols. Now the turbo lifts are working, we're able to take one straight to the deck with the brig. You're a sight for sore eyes. The Terrans have us pinned down here. Remember the mission. Failure is not an option. Oh no, 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 it's certainly an option. It's listed under photon grenade. With the power restored, the station seems more alive, although the earlier darkness hardly was more peaceful. We finally make our way to the brig. Oh, 
I see you got my message. Admiral Lita, you're the per you know what? There are still Terrans to deal with. Uh, talk in a minute. Hey, what's up? Oh, shit. I noticed you took your sweet time to get here, though. What? All right, let's talk. What? Hold on, my my ears are ringing. I I can't hear anything. Ma, ah, uh, ah, uh, ma, ba, 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 ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, that ah, <coughs> that that that'll do. Okay, Admiral Lita. The last time we ran into you was during the Battle of Procyon Five. I have to say, I was beginning to think you weren't coming. Why the delay? All you can eat buffet at Quarks? No, no, I've been stunning Terrans and I'll be throwing their asses in the brig soon, but hey, it looks like you've already got ahead on that front. So, what are you doing here? Please explain yourself and why did you contact me specifically? <laughs> explain myself? <laughs> oh, honey, we do not have the time it'd take for me to explain myself to anyone. Trust me. Bottom line, I need your help with the kind of problem you excel at solving. And I need it fast. That said, can we continue this conversation somewhere else? I don't know if you noticed, but this place is falling apart at the seams, and I'd rather not die in a cell. Thanks. I mean, that depends on how you ended up here, because you are our prisoner, and I'm not going to aid in the Terran's jail break. Wait a minute. You're scared of them. Absolutely! Only an idiot wouldn't be scared in a situation like this. Look, quit wasting time. Get me out of here before it's too late. You're skeptical. I can see that. Fine. I recently acquired a sizable amount of Classified Alliance research data. All sorts of juicy secrets in there. They served me well. Knowledge is power, after all. Please, boast about your crimes some more. This is very much endearing me to you. Even someone like me has to answer to the Emperor. I needed to justify my existence, so I shared some of that data I acquired with him. He found something. Something that he craved more than anything. Getting it became his sole purpose in life. As time went by, it was clear something was wrong. Whispers of madness. Rumors of a new superweapon that could destroy anything, anywhere. Even here. Okay, concerning, but that's not like you, so why are you here? Does it matter? I'm here. Let's move on. I had access to the Emperor's tactical plans. He means to conquer everything in existence, and he believes this weapon will help him do that. Thing is, some of our top scientists feel that he could destroy everything in existence with it. In fact, they think that's the most likely outcome. And I feel the same way. Right, so your emperor has a super weapon, apparently one based on our data, and you came to us for what? For our help? Correct. I found out about this place some time ago. It's close to a point in space where the barrier between our two universes is thin. I made my way here and turned myself in. Figured a super secret research station would avoid a lot of prying eyes. Huh. Guess I dropped the ball on that one, huh? Looks like. So these Terrans found out you crossed over and followed you here. You're the reason they attacked. I'm usually pretty good at covering my tracks, but I was in a hurry. Some of the Emperor's best got wind of my snooping around and decided to put a stop to it. And me. One of my people ratted me out. Captain Kumarke. <laughs> She's always wanted my job. You have a Captain Kumarke on your crew? That's... Um... Moving on. So, so these Terrans, they're not here to free you? Huh, not even a little. They were here to silence me. Permanently. <laughs> Didn't work out so well for them, though. Like I always say, if you come at the Queen, you better not miss. Right, right, except you're less of a Queen right now, more of a fish in a barrel. 
and they would have got to you were it not for me, so... You're welcome. I see you've met the prisoner. Charming, isn't she? Just so-so. Glad you're still alive. Status report. How's the station? I've been able to restore most of the critical systems, but we still have a Terran problem. They've regrouped and dug in around the data lab. I need you to convince them of the error of their ways. Naturally. Okay, let's secure this station. There is a turbo lift around the corner from you that will take you there. I'll meet you there after I secure the brig here. Those Terrans really did a number on this place. All right, I'll make my way there and see if I can soften them up. Don't you dare leave me here! Where are you going? Oh! Sure, sure. Enjoy your royal accommodations, your highness. I didn't see any more Terrans on the way over, and if the data lab's the last of them, it should be secure here, but keep an eye out just in case. We fight our way through another deck to the data lab, where all the archives of this station are stored. It's rather well protected by the Terran forces, but with the help of station security, we manage it in good time. How delightful. I seem to have acquired a new nemesis. Within the main lab of the archives, behind some blast-proof glass, stands a familiar yet different Captain Kumarki. She may appear to resemble our curious, earnest scientist, yet this one is a mirror a twisted and ruthless officer of the Terran Empire. The data lab is not exactly built for combat. The towers of quantum storage and data terminals act as useful cover, so long as we do not consider what exactly it is we're losing with every stray shot. The firefight among the towers is rapid as we push up to the entry door and override its lockout, but even though we were quick, it still cost us valuable time. I'd love to stay and slay, but duty calls, I'm afraid. Until next time. Well, shit, you should probably check what she was accessing at least. We cross the clear floor, ignoring the stomach lurch it instills in me, and access the central console to see what exactly she was doing. And it is not good, because we find nothing. And I mean nothing. She has formatted the data core. Looks like the mainframe was compromised. Check the next console and verify the status of the backups. We do as DeSoto suggested and move to check the backup files on the nearby data tower, only to find the process was incredibly thorough. So, how bad is it? The commander arrives with Admiral Lita in cuffs and out of the brig. Clearly this site is no longer secure. And now it is completely wiped of all files too. Not good because that includes all records of what files have been accessed recently. The system's been wiped! Damn! That means we have no idea what data they took. Exactly. They may have copied one file or all of them, and with all the information erased, we can't tell, so let's just assume worst case. Right. Hold on. Damn. A ship just made the jump from our space to the Mirror Universe. I'm betting our mysterious Lucari was on board. We're gonna have to chase her and get that data back. You know, it's kind of super annoying that the Terrans are the ones that seem to have generated the tech to punch through to this universe at a will. What are we going to do? We don't have that. Find an ion storm? That won't be necessary. One of the research projects here was a dimensional portal activator. It went to prototype a few months ago, so they probably worked all of the bugs out of it by now. I'm assuming it does what it says on the tin. It generates a trans-universal portal between our universe and the mirror universe. They worked on it here because the barrier between our universes is thin. Yes, that coincides with what Lita was saying earlier. The prototype was installed on the Khonshu. With it, we'll be able to open a portal to the Mirror Universe. Once we're there, we can pursue the Terrans and get back what they stole from us. So, you're going to blindly chase after her, aren't you? Well, if you die, the odds of things going south increase dramatically. So, I guess I'm coming with you. Someone needs to make sure you don't screw it all up. Are you ready to head back to your ship? Oh, you're inviting yourself along, are you? Actually... Yeah, we're, we're gonna bring you anyway. With that, we make preparations to beam back to the Armager and make use of the Conshu's prototype dimensional portal. 
The Terrans have frequently been able to locate rifts and weak points in space to bring across their forces, and while these often get addressed by Starfleet, the Terran Empire is persistent, and in the past they've brought across entire space stations like Terak Nor, so it's about time we repaid the favour. But that will be for the next part as we move into the current and up-to-date storyline of Star Trek Online. I've been Rick, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back for the next part. Until then, thanks again, and goodbye.